Happy Saturday morning to everybody. Hope you're doing well. You're off to a great start and things are going well for you and you got your coffee in hand, favorite brew there uh, that you can enjoy and I hope you're having a good one and it's a beautiful morning again, a little cool yet, but it's supposed to be a, a nice day so we're thankful for that. We had some great weather uh, this week so uh, definitely enjoying that and uh, in our own house we are enjoying uh, having a uh, nanny and poppy here and it's been encouraging lots of fun so we're thankful for that as well and uh, again hope you're after a great start and i hope your week was great it was a great week i hope so uh, if you got your bibles turn over to luke chapter number 14 luke chapter number 14 and i would ask you to continue to pray uh, for the wong family with after the passing of jonathan and i do appreciate all the prayers but they definitely need them uh, so let's continue praying for the wong family a part of our church family they need the encouragement and uh, I know they appreciate it very, very much. And they've already relayed that to us, that they are very thankful. So Luke chapter number 14, and down in verse number 16. So Luke 14 and verse number 16. Then he said unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen. I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. Another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So that the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house being angry said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor, the maimed, the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be full. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for another day you've given to us. And Lord, I pray you bless this time as we look in your word and be encouraged on this Saturday morning, Lord. I pray that you just be with us in a special way now. In Jesus' name, amen. So this parable of the great banquet is interesting because it brings up two really important in, uh, themes, invitation and excuses. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out this, this story is more than just a banquet. The parable tells a story uh, tells a story that illustrates a greater point, right? So this story is about the great banquet, but it's more than just a meal and it's guests. The table that was being set out is a wonderful table. It's a luxurious meal, and it's a metaphor of the kingdom of God. The story is about in the invitation to come to the table and the transformation that comes when you choose to take a seat at the table. So it's referring to salvation. That's what it's talking about. The table is invitational. Anyone who can come. Invitation is the one of the main themes of this parable. And much of Jesus' whole ministry, he was seeking people to come. He was asking them to come. Come join him. Come on this journey with me. And Jesus starts this parable by saying that people have been invited to a great banquet. Now, this is a, a common theme in that day that those would individuals who are having the banquet would invite the mighty and prominent that would come. Okay, come to my come to my uh, banquet, come to my uh, supper table, uh, because who you ate with mattered. Uh, it kind of showed your social standing. Okay, it was definitely a social event, and so the story starts. And Jesus said, "The masters invited all the popular, and yet they can't make it. They all have an excuse." And the master looks around and sees all his work, and he's put into this meal. And these events would have been massive, these banquets in this time period, would have cost a lot of money, would have taken a lot of time to prepare. I mean, the idea that any any kind of delicacy in the first century you could think of would have been at this banquet, okay? So rather for, than the food to go to waste, I mean, they don't have much for prep, you know, preserving food after it's been cooked in that day, in that time, the owner of the our master sends out the servant to say, hey, bring in the poor, bring in the cripple, bring in the blind, bring in the lame, whoever you can find. Now, that group is a pretty motley crew, okay? They're not the ordinary guests. These are the outcasts. These are the people on the fringes. 
Uh, these are people who are off for, for God or they're marginalized, and especially in this culture of Jesus' day. Now, this is a powerful, uh, because the, the master knows the value of this feast, and he chooses to say, I'm going to associate even with those who are considered outcasts. Uh, Jesus is really uh, flipping the cultural norms upside down here and says, you know, the blind, the poor, the lame, you didn't have anything to do with that, with those people, if you weren't one of those people. Okay, so he says the invitation, the banquet is for all. Again, that's a major theme of this parable. It's the great banquet is as an open invitation to any and all who would like to come. Just not to the popular or just to the powerful. God wants me. God wants you. God wants everyone at his table. Just not the good folks of the world, but the broken, the messy, the people who struggle, you know, people who have rough, are rough around the edges, as they would say. Individuals who struggle to accept love and the grace of God. God wants, he wants to invite everyone. He doesn't want anyone to stay away. And that's key because you, when you start to understand this, you begin to realize no matter where you are or how broken you think you are, you're never too far away from God. You're, you're never too far away from his love, from his embrace. And you're always inv invited. That the, the invitation is never void, you know, in the sense that today you are, tomorrow you're not. Today's the day of salvation. Today you need to come uh, and accept Christ as Savior. Uh, so all are invited to the table. So it's just not invitation, though. We see excuses are another part of this the theme of this parable. Jesus invites all kinds of people. And we see them one by one, the beginning ones, creating excuses. One says, hey, I bought land. I need to go see it. Uh, I, need, I need to go do this. Or what, I, I need to see the oxen. I just got married. Whatever. So they, in their minds, they think this is okay. These excuses are fine. And they are valid in the minds of these individuals. But it demonstrates uh, that they didn't care for the one who was inviting them to come. They didn't care. And many have great excuses today to not accept Christ. But they still need the Lord. You know, the reality is excuses will never gain you access to heaven. Okay, it just won't happen. Uh, you can put all, you can get the best excuses in the world, but it'll never grant you access to heaven. It will never get you a relationship with Jesus Christ. So you know, so it's invitation to come. We see those excusing, and so that is the main interpretation. That is the interpretation of that portion of scripture. But there's an application that we can make for us as Christians this morning. You know, how is your walk? You know, the Lord wants you to be communing with Him. That's what you do at a table, right? I know this portion of scripture is talking about salvation. But the application is, are, are we in communion at the table of God with our Heavenly Father? Do we find excuses not to be in the Word? Not to be in prayer? You know, I, I have heard a lot of different reasons over the years. Uh, life got in the way. Life gets busy. I mean, I understand. I get that. Times are tough. Yep. You know, we all face it. Uh, and sometimes God gets uh, put to the back burner. And what he wants us to do, we just kind of push it back. Uh, because, you know, the reality is every one of us, myself included, we all have an excuse at some time. We have a lot of things that get in the way of relationship and it puts up a bit of a barrier. It, it uh, severs. We're always part of the family, uh, the, the family of God, but the communion, the, the fellowship is not as sweet as it was before. So we need to drop the excuses. We need to say, hey, I need to spend time. The invitation is always open for me to come and be with the Lord and embrace that time with him. And we need to choose to sit at the table and commune with the Lord, get in his word, spend time in prayer, uh, praise him, uh, you know, lift up his name. Uh, and, and, and we'll be encouraged when we remove the barrier, when we remove the excuses, you know, we'll be encouraged for the strength, uh, for the journey. We'll find strength, uh, strength for the journey as well when we communicate with the Lord. And so don't give in to excuses, okay? So this application for us as Christians, don't give in to excuses uh, to say, no, I'll put that off for another time. I'm, no, no, don't do that. So don't give in to excuses, accept the invitation. The Lord says, come, come, come be at the table. And what a great table it is. You know, I, I've, been, I've been blessed to attend some wonderful feasts and things of that nature. And just the lay of food and, and presentation is amazing. And it's great. I, and you know me, I like to eat. Uh, but the reality is when you come to the Lord's table, 
it's amazing. It's beyond any description that I can give you. There's, there's hope, there's peace, there's joy, there's conviction on times, absolutely. But that table is amazing. So Christian, don't, don't, make, don't find an excuse to not go and commune with the Lord. Uh, accept the invitation that he wants you to come. And if you don't know Christ as Savior, the invitation is always open. Come. Don't use an excuse. An excuse will never get you to heaven. All right? An excuse will never get you a relationship with Jesus Christ. Accepting the invitation will. So I hope you will do that. I hope you'll put off the excuse and accept the invitation. All right, so I hope that's been an encouragement to you. This morning at 1030 at church, we're going to put out some door hangers in our neighborhood. The weather is looking great. Uh, no rain in the forecast and things. So that's at uh, 1030. If you can't make it today, if you know, I know it happens. Uh, you got to work, you know, other responsibilities previous to knowing about this. I understand it happens. Uh, we will have maps available and things at church tomorrow and door hangers. If you want to take some door hangers and do your neighborhood, that's fine. We'll have them out. Uh, so if you can't make it today, there'll be opportunities for you to get these things and uh, reach out to our community. All right. So then tomorrow at nine, we'll be looking at prayer in Ephesians. Actually, it's the last message. I've gone through the book of Ephesians. So this is the last one. I'll we'll be looking at prayer, Ephesians chapter six. And then tomorrow afternoon at five, We'll be examining, uh, we'll finish up our little mini-series on Ezekiel 38 and 39. So I would love to see you in person, but if you can't make it, you can join us online. So we're thankful for that tool that you can uh, be encouraged by the Word. All right, so I hope you have a fantastic Saturday. Uh, enjoy your cold brew or your hot brew. I'm enjoying mine. Ran up to Timmy's this morning already, so uh, so thankful for that. I'm enjoying my coffee. Keep following the Lord and looking at Jesus. God bless and take care.